So it's very, uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here. It's uh, very nice to be here today. Um, and um, today we're going to talk about something which is very important. At the same time, um, will we'll help us pave the way in our long path of evolution. Understanding a little bit about uh, what we do, what we can do better, and why we should do it better. Why we should work hard on it. Um, those are a lot of things we're going to be talking about today on the trial expeditions, education and evolution. And I think, um, obviously, I'm not going to steal any thunder from Tiago today, but just obviously saying that um, what a blessing it is God allow us to give this opportunity to learn. I never thought about that. We can actually learn. We can. This is actually one of the big, big blessings that uh, we have and we don't sometimes think about. Uh, and I'm sure Tiago will enlighten us with this uh, lecture today. But before that, we're going to have, um, as usual, we're going to have a passage. Livia is going to read from us with the book Happy Life. And then uh, we're going to do our initial prayer. And then we're going to have our um, lecture by Tiago. So, Livia, please, let's get started. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, today I'll be reading from the book Happy Life by Givaldo Pereira Franco and Juan de Angelis. Be everyone's friend. Friendship is a treasure of the spirit to be shared with others. Like the sun, it radiates to happiness to all who receive it. There is an immense shortage of friends on earth, and this causes conflicts and suspicions, imbalance and insecurity. There is, sorry, when friendship is lacking, man is at risk. Be the kind friend, even if, for the time being, you experience misunderstandings and difficulties. So may we all at this moment, with the words of Juana de Angelis in our mind, establishing this friendship, this loving relationship between us, and our Father, Mother, God, and our Master, Jesus. We ask all our spiritual friends that are joining us today to help us enlighten our thoughts and take this opportunity of learning with all our hearts, with all our minds. May God bless each one of us, the ones that are here that we can see incarnated and the discarnated ones, the ones that are not around us at this moment, but certainly share with us this moment of prayer all around the world and the universe for all of those in pain, all of those who have no one else to pray for them. And let our Master Jesus, with the words of love and charity, bring into our hearts this beautiful energy that flows from above. Thank you very much, and so be it. Tiago, please. Good morning, everyone. Marco set the bar very high, right? I hope that those few words that I'm going to share with you may help you in some way. Uh, we don't have much time to go in depth of so much information that is so important for us talking about trials and expiations that are in fact mechanisms of education and evolution of our spirits. But I hope that those few words may help you to become excited to go and study, to go and get to know more, and to do your part as well in this process. Beautiful reading as well from uh, Livia that reminds us that in our process of evolution, how much we need each other. And uh, talking about trials and expiations in this world that we live with so much diversity 
with so many people that we interact with, the need to befriend each other and the need to befriend ourselves is very important. Remembering Jesus before he is given to the crucifixion, he sits with the disciples and he looks to them and says, you are not my disciples anymore. You are my friends. Therefore, he invites us to look at each other closer, to look at each other and see in each other someone that you can count on. And that is fundamental for us thinking about trials and expiations because mainly our path of evolution crosses. Everyone is growing together. Everyone is evolving together. Therefore, if we are close to each other, we hurt each other as well. But God gives us the opportunity to, to amend that through certain things that we're going to talk about. Well, going through this very brief introduction, let's try to remember first, and I like doing that, when we talk about trials and expiations, the Spiritism gives us a good foundation. And we cannot understand trials and expiations in this life as mechanisms of evolution if we don't touch upon two important principles that the Spiritism enlightens us with. And the first one, and I brought Jesus himself to tell us that, <coughs> do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. That is one of the most clear passages when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, one of the doctors of the law. And Nicodemus was marveled with that idea that someone could be born again. So in that moment, Jesus is talking about the principle of reincarnation. A reincarnation is one of the most important laws and one of the most important gifts that God gives us. Without reincarnation, the wrongdoings would not have a chance to be repaired. The evolution would have a very short time to be processed. And we know that it's impossible for us in one existence to grow everything that we need to grow, to learn and put in practice all the qualities that we have in potential, and also to repair all that we have done that was not that good to ourselves, to others, and towards the divine laws. So God gives us the gift of reincarnation. What we could not complete today, we will complete in the next existence or in the next existences. Because we were born simple and ignorant. And we were created to be pure. And to be as perfect as a spirit can be, being creation of God. But in order for us to be perfect... That is a long way. Every existence is like a f one small step for us to go, to go towards that perfection. And of course that even in the book Heaven and Hell, Alan Kardec will very wisely say to us that one single corporeal <coughs> existence is manifestly insufficient for the spirit to acquire all the good it lacks and to eliminate all its evils. So it is there. Alain Kardec already enlightens us about it just to make sure that we have that understanding when we are talking about trials and expiations because this will make all the difference. The Spiritism come to us to enlighten as well to console our hearts. All of us go through difficulties. All of us go through some level of pain in our lives. Disappointments. Illness. Separations from people that we love. You know, disagreements. And if we think that we don't have a chance to repair, to redo, or to have the opportunity to reconcile, that usually gives us a very bad feeling. 
we may end up falling into some sort of desperation or hopelessness that is not good for us. But the Spiritism reminds us, one, we are not alone. Second, we will have time if we want to use this time for our betterment. And the second premise is the free will. And that is also fundamental for us to understand that we have choices to make. Our lives are not determined previously by God, by anyone else. But it is determined by the consequences of our own actions. And that is the second important point that shows us that whatever we're going through today, if not a hundred percent, we have a very huge part on the responsibility for what we are going through. Or because of previous existences, or because of the seeds that we are planting today, that we are going to sow tomorrow. The free will is developed in us more we evolve, more we go through the tests that God puts in front of us. So then we can acquire more qualities. We become more virtuous, we become more wise, we become more intelligent. Therefore, we can use those qualities for the betterment of ourselves and for the betterment of whoever is with us and even for the betterment of the planet. Therefore, we will see sometimes there are reasons why we go through the challenges and some of the pain that we go through. And if we don't understand that we can do something about it, we will end up blaming others. We will end up being resented for things that we are creating, for thoughts that we are putting outside ourselves but the free will helps us to look back within in order to understand who we are, in order to understand what is our part in the events that are surrounding us today and what we can do in order to plant a better future for us. Positive actions cause positive outcomes. Negative actions naturally will cause us the need to do something to revert. And because of reincarnation and because God is not only justice, but is goodness and mercy, we will have the chance to repair. We are destined to perfection and to happiness. And through trials and expiations, God gives us the opportunity for us to reach that happiness that we are destined to. All right. Now that we have a little bit of information, like those two feet, you know, one is the reincarnation, the other one is the free will, we can then walk towards what is really trial and what is expiation, what is the difference between the two of them, and what we can do when we are facing them. Let's think about the trials first. Well, we all know, right? We go to school, we have homework, we have our teachers, we need to learn lots of different disciplines. Some people are just like, oh no, school. <laughs> no. Jonah de Angelis tells us a lot about the earth being a school, a school of life. We come here. We learn many things from the spiritual world. And we have the chance when we come here to put in practice. To put to test certain abilities that we have that are latent. We put to the test certain abilities that we are telling ourselves, I have that. I am patient. I am patient. Okay. Let's prove. You know, it's the same thing. You go to school, say, I know math. Oh, the teacher comes with a little piece of paper full of mud to prove to me. Our incarnations in regards to trials, 
They are the opportunities that we have to put to test qualities that we are acquiring, to consolidate learnings that we are through incarnations, you know, incorporating to ourselves. And they have to do with choices that we make today in order to look for a better tomorrow. Let's remember that. Trials have to do with tomorrow. And trials are vol mostly, they are voluntary tasks that we take on. Let's think about it. Allan Kardec asks the spirits about it. You know, how do we do that? How do we choose that? Who chooses this for us? What about those trials that you're talking about? And the spirits will tell Allan Kardec that the spirit itself chooses the kind of trials that we undergo because the spirit has the free will. More free will, more opportunity to choose, therefore more responsibility for the choices that we make. We are never alone, never alone. But this is something that we will do voluntarily. One example, I am learning to be patient. I am for a couple of incarnations trying to practice that, trying to get rid of certain, you know, limitations that I have. And then I say, okay, in order to be patient, I will probably like to reincarnate around people that are going to put my patience to the test. How? People that don't let me talk, and families that are very loud, you know, and I come very quiet, and I need to learn how to be patient to wait for my turn when we come in those big families, especially if you are the youngest one, you are the last one to speak, the last one to get the food, you know, the, the last one to get into the car, all those little things. And just using very light examples for us to understand that the trials are opportunities that we have to put to the test. What are we are gaining? It has to do with patience. It has to do with humbleness. It has to do with the tolerance, the respect. Because we are talking here about putting to the test our moral qualities, mainly. Therefore, in order to learn how to be respectful, I can be born around people that share those qualities so that I can consolidate or around people that are going to disrespect me so then I can learn how being disrespectful is not good, do something different, you know, and be able to put in practice that. And or also to give me the opportunity that if I am trying to be more patient, I need to go through the difficulties that those trials present to me. And that's why when we talk about trials, they also have to do with effort. It is not something easy. Oh yeah, I'm just going to prove something that I know. When the spirit knows something, the spirit moves on. And we move on to new trials and to new learnings. If I am patient, I don't need to be tested. But I will start using that in benefit of others as well. But if we know that we are going through some difficulties and we reflect a lot of certain <coughs> qualities that we have or we want to have, be sure we are being put to the test. Therefore, let's rejoice that we are being put to the test. It is difficult for us, but this is the seed that we are planting today in order to really achieve that state of happiness that is relative to our level of evolution that is going to let us think, yes, I've been through a difficult task and I was successful and then I can rejoice because the next time I will carry this with me. So, it is the Spirit's choice. It is about learning new skills, new qualities or new virtues that are the moral qualities. It is a test for our abilities that we are acquiring and learning. And many times we learn in the spiritual world. And we make those choices when we are planning our reincarnation. And they are needed. 
They are not a punishment. They are an opportunity. And the merit will belong to the Spirit. If I come surrounded by people that are going to be very easy on me, I don't need to put to the test. Therefore, every time that the Spirit, because it's free will, makes a choice and is successful, it acquires the merit of all the goodness that comes out of their good choices that they made. And it is a plan for future happiness. Of course, we have help. It is interesting. One question that I had while I was studying that. Well, if I make a choice about a trial that is potentially beyond my ability to undergo. What if I am put to a test to be respectful, but I have an environment that doesn't allow me to do that or that I fail? In certain occasions, the good spirits will let us go through a difficult situation, even though they know that it is possible for us to be successful, they will let us go through that. Because what is the learning if we fail? It's because probably we are not humble enough to make choices that are compatible with our level of evolution. Therefore, it is a trial for us to learn about uh, to learn how to be humble, how to look to ourselves. Without those opportunities of the trials, we will never know exactly who we are. We will never know our limitations. We will never have the chance to really progress. If we didn't have the choices to get through the trials, we will probably be as primitive as the first humans were. And this push for progress, it is essential for us to be able to grow. And of course, it is within our possibilities. If we fail, it is one. Or because we still didn't put all the effort that we could have put, or because there is another learning on failing. Everyone learns something when we fail. If we want to, we understand that we need to acquire more qualities, you know. We need to study more than to be successful in the next test. And to keep progressing, you know. We know that stress, talk about that a lot recently, stress is something very positive for us. We move through applying stress on us. That is the energy that moves us to change. If we are flat, look warm, we go nowhere. You know, it's the same as where is Gigi? Like when the, the baby's there in the womb, nice, quiet, warm. Do you think they wanna see you? Oh, they don't. They wanna be there forever. <laughs> but then suddenly there is a stress. <coughs> the nature is pushing the baby out and then forces the baby to give that big breath that it was not used to and go through that intense stress. So we are able to learn something different, to be put into those experiences to really change us. So then we learn something different. So that is more or less the <coughs> trial that we go through. Each one of us will have a different example of trials that we believe that we are going through. And if we are reflecting a lot about that, probably you are right. And I found a little cartoon just to illustrate a little bit what a trial would mean then. You know? Who knows? That is me there in the time that I had hair. <laughs> you know? My mood was there, so so. But I kept thinking, you know, I want to be happier. I want to be happier, you know. Well, my spiritual friend said, okay, you know, you can reincarnate. We will give you opportunities. We'll talk about opportunities to be happier. So what do you think that we can get in order to have our happiness? A problem. A problem that makes us even worse in our mood than we were before. 
And there I am. Oh my gosh, I asked to be happier and then my mood is going down. And then it's getting even worse. But then I need to do something with this problem. I need to find ways and solutions to really get rid of this problem on my own in order to feel good after. So then, of course, and then I find a way. And then I get rid of this problem. I solve this problem. I eliminate this problem from my life. And then my mood goes up. And I am happier. And then I thank this problem for having happened to me. Because the problem that we see today may have been the opportunity that we asked for in order to become victorious tomorrow. And when we regain our senses, we understand that most, if not all, <coughs> the difficulties that we are going through today are the best opportunities that God has given us. Is what Marcus said. The blessed opportunity that God allows us to have in order for us to evolve spiritually. Okay, we talked about trials. We talked about the difficulties and the challenges that we go through. And we are looking forward, remember. In a trial, we are looking forward. Now, in the expiation, sometimes it may have a similar weight in terms of challenge, in terms of pain that we go through. But the, for the expiation, we look back. If the trial is something for the future, the expiation is a result of something that we have done in the past. In the past, far away, or in a recent past. But usually, it is a consequence, consequence of what we have done before. So, Alan Kardec will give us an explanation in a little book that was precursor to the medium's book that is the practical instructions to the manifestation with the spirits that he tells very well that the, the, the expiation is the penalty that the spirit suffers from the faults committed during the corporeal life it could have been a past corporeal life it could have been this present corporeal life as well. And that also, instead of us looking to the expiation as something negative, let's look with the lens that the Spiritism gives us. We are still imperfect. Because we are still imperfect, it is inevitable that we make mistakes. <coughs> Mostly, the mistakes that we will do are out of ignorance. And ignorance here is simply not knowing. But if we have the opportunity to do something about it and to learn, but we are still not learning, and we are still reciting in the same acts, in the same actions, the same thoughts, in the same habits, in the same mistakes, then the law of cause and effect will come into place to help us if we become stationary necessarily we will suffer we are not meant to be stationary we are not meant to be idle we are meant to evolve when we don't do it because of ourselves or because of what we are how we are relating with others we will suffer The expiations, different from the trials that we choose, the expiations are imposed to the Spirit. Our friends will come to us and say, Well, something happened. You hurt someone with your actions. And you didn't use that well, your free will, right? Therefore, you infringed one of the divine laws. Because 
you broke a divine law. Remember that free will that you had to make a choice? You didn't use that well. We're going to limit you a little bit. We're not going to let you in the next, exist uh, next existence to have all that free will that you have today. You are not going backwards, okay? We never go backwards. Whatever the spirit acquires, he never forgets. Whatever we face during this incarnation is always an opportunity to change, to learn, and to evolve. That is a process of education for us. You will know how valuable is your free will when you don't have it in full. That happens. And this happens <coughs> through physical and moral suffering. Sometimes it may be an illness that we carry because of bad habits. When we infringe the law with ourselves, when we put ourselves through excess, if we eat too much, we have stomach ache, you know, we have a gastritis, whatever, you know. If we run more than we can, what's gonna happen? We're gonna be exhausted, we will pass out, we will need to go to the emergency. If we don't drink, water we will dehydrate our bodily functions will go down we will need help if we don't put in practice our patience our respect instead if we are disrespectful if we hurt other people this will hurt us as well because we are not using the potential that we have and the seeds of goodness and love that are within us Therefore, this will bring us some level of suffering. And when we talk about moral suffering, is that feeling when the, how do we call here, when the coin drops and you really realize, oh my God, why did I say what I said? <coughs> now, my friend doesn't want to talk to me. Why did I respond in a, such a rude way to my partner? And now I don't have my partner here even to eat with me. And they are suffering. And because they are suffering, I am suffering. That's the realization that we did something wrong. But it's not a punishment, remember. God is infinitely just and good and he doesn't punish anyone the laws are not there to punish justice cause and effect are educational mechanisms because we are still imperfect only through certain events that are really going to affect us we are going to realize sometimes we need you know a little bit of a shake up to understand how we are to understand what we are doing and through those negative events apparently but through the suffering which God allows to happen we will figure out a way not to suffer anymore and not to let others suffer either as I said, it imposes certain limitations to our free will. If I had a choice and I was born around, you know, wealthy people because I asked to make a, a good use of the wealth for the collective good. And then I was born and then I reincarnated and then I was living in this wealthy family and I had all the opportunities of education, of work, when it comes to me to make good use of that wealth, what have I done? Why am I going to give that? I kept this with me, for instance. I forgot that I could use for the collective good. I forgot that the wealth, material wealth that I have is temporary, but I treat it as if it was permanent. Therefore, when I discarnate, and then I realized that the choices that I made 
I could not put into practice. And there were people that would potentially benefit a lot from the choices that I believe that I could have done, but I didn't. That will hit me. And that is the opportunity that we have in order to make in the future of our choices. To realize that next time I may not have the chance to make all those choices. But our friends are going to tell us, you know what? There was a concession for you. And now I believe we're going to need to limit that concession. And you're not going to have the ability to have all of that that you would like to have in order for us to give value. Sometimes, because of our level of evolution, when do we value something? Anyone can tell me. When we? When we lose. Exactly, we all know. It all has hit us in some point of our lives. Why? Because it's just because where we are. And the fact that we know that many times when we lose, we give value to some things. Next time, we will give the value for that. And many of the opportunities that we have today that we are giving value to, to friends, to family, to people, to things that we have around there is because we are probably putting to the test today how much value they have for us. And especially when we come to certain very you know, painful situations, when we lose someone for the rest of that existence here, when we are facing certain difficulties that we don't see much an opportunity to get rid of, that's when it comes to us a very important part of us that we need to use. That is our resignation. Whatever is out of our control is still under God's control. If we have help for our trials, oh my friends, we have much more help during our expiations. Because God is not going to let us going through, going through those difficulties by ourselves. <coughs> and He knows that through our spiritual friends, through inspiration, through the whispers that our friends give to us, accept, resign, persist, in searching for something better. Don't give up. It's very important for us, especially when we are going through expiation. Because we know as well, and Jesus already told us, blessed are the afflicted. This is a blessing. When we suffer, it is God helping us to really make a change in our lives it is the education for the spirit and that's what i call god's tough love it is tough love it is not punishment every time that we you know try to educate the the, the parents who are having their meetings you know when we try to educate the children and suddenly we impose some limitations not to let them suffer more they're gonna be you know upset we may have had opportunity to tell them, you know, don't put your finger in the outlet. It is going to hurt until the day that they go there and then it hurts. <laughs> and then they spend a long time regretting that they put their fingers there. And then we just look at it and say, that's okay. It hurts, but now you learn that you don't go there and stick your finger in that hole, right? If physically... We have the pain that is an alert for us that we need to change. You know, if we don't know that someone was cooking something, we get to the kitchen and then we are just leaning on the stove <laughs> to talk to our partner. If we didn't have pain, what was going to happen? We will be hurting, hurting, hurting. We will be deteriorating part of us to the point that we would lose spiritually. The suffering that we go through is one of the best alerts because it is the most concrete element that God gives us in order for us to make that change. Again, the Spiritism gives us another element 
to make us look through the pain that we are going through with a different set of eyes. Is the pain going to diminish? Some would say yes, some would say no. And you know why? Because if we look to an adverse situation and we understand the cause and we understand the consequence, we're going through those adverse situations and we endure more. There, inside our heads, it diminishes the effect that this adverse situation has on us. So in some way, it does diminish. God is not going to take this from us, but we are going to see it through a different set of eyes, through a different lens. Therefore, instead of the problem being like that before, it's going to look for us a little smaller, more compatible with our situation today. And when we go through, and when we endure, and when we are successful, suffering well, like in this, the, the gospel according to Spiritism, understanding from the point of view of the Spiritism that passage of the gospel blessed are the afflicted, it is about suffering well. And the pain that is inevitable in our lives, we can revolt, we can accept, we can despair, or we can have hope for the future. We can go through bitter, making our suffering even more complicated, accumulating more resentment, or we can look at it, understand that this is out of our hands for a little bit, but it is at hand, the patience. It is at hand, the endurance. It is at hand, the courage, the persistence in order for us to go through that pain and then understand in the future that that pain is going away. Now, the book Heaven and Hell. When we talk about expiation, many of us probably were brought up in different faith, different religion, different set of values. And Sometimes we learn that if we did something wrong, what do we need to do? We need to repent. And if we repent, we will be saved. Or all the pain will go away. Or the effect of that pain will go away. Well, the Spiritism will tell us the repentance is very important. However, it is only the first step. If we were looking before to get only one product. Now the Spiritism came with what I call a combo. Right? You can get one product or you can make it a combo and usually comes three. That's what the Spiritism is giving us. Repentance alone is not enough for us to erase the consequence of our wrongdoing. But don't despair because Spiritism gave us two more elements that we need to get hold of in order to make sh that we make sure that we are going to one erase the consequence of the doings that we did that were wrong <coughs> and not only that to replace that with something good again it is about education and if it is about education and our destiny is to be good and to be happy let's do everything that we can in order to reach that happiness even when we fail, even when we hurt, even when we are going through a very serious pain in our lives. So, the repentance is that moment when we realize that we have done wrong. And if someone tells us, you know, out of their mouths. Oh, because I did this, I'm so bad about it, I'm feeling so horrible. You, they are trying. But when we realize that we do something, do we need to say anything? Usually, we come back to ourselves and we realize, and that touches us there inside. That is an intimate moment of realization. That is the first step. 
for us in order to be allowed to expiate. The spirits knowing that we repented, that we realize that we have done something wrong, they will prepare us for the rehabilitation. Then it will open the doors for us to really repair the wrong that we have done. It is understanding from the bottom of our spirit and not simply think, oh, I understand I did something wrong. So give me what I need to do in order to repair. No. The understanding is from the spirit. And it is the first step. The earlier given, the better. The spirits will tell us that many times when we realize still in this world that emotional pain that we feel, that moral pain that we feel is already the beginning of our expiation. Because the expiation we will see after, it is the pain that we go through. It is those adverse feelings that we are carrying. But if we wait too much, then God is going to give us other elements that sometimes are going to be a little more painful because He wants us to realize what we have done. And then we come to the expiation properly, which is basically the physical and the moral pain. That is going to be that huge regret that we carry. Sometimes it may involve some feelings even of guilt that we need to be very aware of. That realization, you know, that you feel a little ashamed. That we carry with us for a little while. That really give us that kind of a little bad taste in our mouth. To really realize in a very concrete way that something was not okay. There is no rule on the nature or the duration of the expiation. So there is no formula. We may have those questions and they are valid. How long is it going to take for me to go through that? More the spirit is hardened in, in, in that, you know, in, in resisting to accept, more is going to last. It depends on us. If we really reflect, reflect, open ourselves, realize that we are imperfectly, we do something wrong. We can start feeling that and then we open the opportunity to recover Every wrong must be repaired. It is inevitable. It is about realigning ourselves with the divine laws. But because God is not only justice but also mercy, remember that He said that love covers a multitude of sins. Therefore, when we do something good, one good many times helps us to repair and to recover from a lot of wrongs that we have done if we really put our hearts into it. And it is a purifying element for us. We stain ourselves with that wrong, but it is possible for us to purify ourselves from that wrong. Remember, because it is imposed, usually means that sometimes we didn't want to do this voluntarily <laughs> as well. Therefore, God comes to us and says, Hey, let's put a foot on the brake for a little bit. And then finally, we have the reparation. And then the reparation is, of course, when God comes to us and says, Okay, my friend. Now it is your chance to go through a new trial. Remember, there will become then a new chance, a new tomorrow, a new opportunity. And this time you will have the chance to pick up <laughs> from where you stop the good that you were doing and continue. Right? It is the good done to erase the wrongdoing. Now we have the chance all over again. God is so good, so merciful. Every aspect of God's justice has built in mercy. 
because there is no rule, many times we will have many opportunities to do good. We will be presented with so many chances to finally recover what we have done before. And usually this is done to those who we hurt. Therefore, if we committed a crime, let's think about something very concrete. If we committed a crime in the past, if we murdered someone, what would happen? Will I die as my expiation? Maybe yes, maybe no. Remember, there is no rule. I may arrive with some physical pain myself, with some moral pain myself, or I may have the opportunity to, through doing good to this person that I did something wrong in the past, they may be my son or daughter that I hurt in the past. And God is giving me the chance because of the blessing of the forgetfulness of the past to finally love those who I didn't have the chance to love in the past. Is this a process of expiation? Oh yes, it is. And to finally realize what hasn't been done. And there is another important point. It is paying forward. And what do I want to say with that? Yes, it is true that we will have the opportunity to do good to those that we didn't do good before. What if they forgave me and moved on? Do I need to wait for them to need to connect with me again so then I can do good? Not necessarily. This will be karma, right? Like if I something wrong happened with me, you know, and uh, because I did something wrong to someone else, then we are going through another another territory that is not spiritism. And in some other understandings, we think that karma, because karma is something that goes back to us almost in the same level. Here, we are talking about pain forward as well. If someone that I've done wrong to forgives me and moves on, that is going to be up to me in order to, through doing the good that I haven't done, maybe to others as well, recover. Because the idea is for me to acquire the good that I haven't acquired before. It is about growing spiritually in ways that I couldn't grow before. So, not necessarily we will be progressing and re-educating ourselves with the same people that we heard before. Many times it will happen. Not a strict rule, remember. Because it is paying forward. It is doing good. And we are all a family. We are all brothers and sisters. The good that I do to one, I do to myself. And I can do to everyone else. And finally, Jesus told us, blessed are the afflicted. Because he knew that being today incarnated in this planet, the trials and tribulations of life are a reality for us. But he also gave us all the elements in order for us to go through those limitations, to go through those tribulations and be victorious. Not only that, he helped us to understand and the spiritism even more that because we are spirits incarnated, that incarnation that we are here today is the best opportunity for us to get rid of certain limitations that we have, to put in practice certain qualities that we have that are latent in us and to plant today the goodness that we are envisioning for our future, right? We're going to have courage. We're going to have persistence, perseverance, and we're going to have faith in the divine providence, right? Have cho having chosen our trials or not, that is not what is important. Trials or expiations, we can use the same endurance, no matter if we are choosing or not the difficulties and the challenges that we're going through in our lives. So instead of sometimes wasting our energy trying to think, is this a trial? Is this an expiation? We can change a little bit of our mindset and say, whatever this is, this is a blessed opportunity that God is giving me in order for me to grow. 
and whatever the nature of my challenges, what matters is the good deeds that I'm doing for myself, the good deeds that I'm doing for others, and what I'm doing in order to grow and to get rid of those limitations to be better tomorrow. Jesus told us, you know, go through the narrow door. It is easy to complain, it is easy to despair, it is easy to revolt, it is easy to think that there is no way out. The straight door, the door that leads to life, like Jesus told us, is the one that we can focus our energy and our sentiment on. Because our path is the path of goodness. Our only destination is the perfection that is allowed to us. And of course that Jesus finally tells us, take my yoke upon you. You know what is the yoke, right? When you have a little um, cart that is being pushed by the cows, the yoke is that piece of wood that is sharing the burden or the heavy weight by two cows. So when Jesus tells us, take my yoke upon you, he's inviting us to use the examples that he had for us so then we can change our mindset therefore making the burdens that we are going through today be a little lighter through understanding that those burdens of today are our happiness of tomorrow he is gentle and humble in heart and he's also inviting us through those difficulties to use the gentleness with ourselves not to be too hard on ourselves and to be humble accepting gladly the challenges that life faces to us and you will find rest for your souls the rest that we have today is when we have that hope that whatever we are going through we're going to see a better tomorrow so then let's start today right thank you very much all right thank you tiago uh, for the for the lecture um so we do have uh, a couple minutes if anyone have any questions, um, any comments, uh, anything from the internet there, Carlos? No? Yes, someone? Okay. So actually, I do have a quick question. So, so uh, I think what Tiago showed us uh, was amazing is that, uh, again, we have this opportunity to understand why we go through certain things and why we... 99.9% .9 of the time asked to do that. Um, but so I think I'm more like a comment uh, as a question. It's like, so knowing that we're coming in with this baggage that we, we don't remember, right? But we, it, it, it's there. We can't see it, but it's there. But we feel it, right? <coughs> so do you think, how is that going to change someone's perspective going through like a challenging time in their lives? You know, like understanding that there's a reason and there's a future ahead of that. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think what I was trying, you know, part of what I was trying to point out as well is, you know, to each one according to their deeds. It always comes to me to it. When we don't have that idea, that, that understanding sometimes that we are carrying yeah. the results of our limitations, it is very easy to blame others. It's very easy to be blind to ourselves to who we are. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it is about, you know, know thyself, not about know and judge others. That this helps us to diminish our judging attitude towards others, to think that others are responsible for my mistakes, that others are responsible for my suffering, mm -hmm. especially the closest ones. Yeah. Because again, when we are close to people and, you know, family especially, and we are going through certain, certain pain in our lives if we don't have that understanding that we are responsible for the consequences of our actions it may be very easy to hurt others even more accumulating more baggage to us right because we are blind to see that but exactly. when we start looking back and say yes I carry limitations therefore what is what I'm going through may have and for sure will have to do with uh, the consequences of my own wrongdoing, 
I will then look to myself yeah. and try to realize what I can do in order to change, right? Mm -hmm. Because then mm -hmm. avoids us to keep accumulating even more baggage yeah. <laughs> for the future. That's yeah. what I can take from that. Yeah, fantastic. So, so thanks, Thiago. I think uh, we all learned a little bit today, and that's great. Uh, so we're going to continue on with our passes. So um, this is, as, as you guys know, this is a moment. Yes, yeah, so, that was awesome. So um, for all, if you guys in the back could follow.